Three, two, one. It's time for Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Normor Dez. Hey, that's right. Back for the final show on this beautiful Tuesday here in wine country. Brian, man, the grapes are looking good. They are. It's uh, some people are even picking them right now. So. It's going to it's going to be a terrific wine year, hopefully here in Oregon. So our next guest, the ageless arm, and passion lives in his core, and that is Rodney Tafoya. Rod, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Norm. Thanks for having me a second time. I appreciate it. This is awesome because you. We talk pitching with you, and you put it in a whole different language for us. And so, like, you know, like last night, you and I were chatting over Facebook about, you know, what you're seeing in, in today's game. And so we'll get to that here in a little bit, but um, what have you been up to? Well, a lot of pitching, actually. I just got back from a nice little 21-hour road trip. Drove down to San Antonio, Texas for the Labor Day tournament and had a had a nice successful outing. And did you have another complete game? Had another complete game. I've thrown seven complete games in a row. This one was nine innings, 112 pitches, five zero shutout. Wow. It was great. Wow. So San Antonio, you know, of course, San Antonio is in the news lately because of the high school football incident. Have you seen that at all? I watched it last night. Two guys <sighs> blindsided the ref. Makes me sick. You know, as a Couldn't as a former it. high school football coach, you know, just makes me sick. I, I have no idea. You know, they're saying, well, he was throwing racial slurs out. I mean, regardless, you know, there's no need – need for that in any sport and so i hope yeah, I uh agree. i hope that you know um justice, justice will be served absolutely right. so mr tafoya man so you have had another complete game so what is what's your secret man yeah it's pretty exciting it's like kind of business as usual so what so what is your secret? So I know one, it's a lot of hard work, but it goes it goes a little bit beyond um, the hard work. It's also preparation preparation and rest. And uh, let's chat a little bit about that. How how are you being how are you so successful at having um, pitched so many games, winning so many games and the complete games? Well, that's a good question because I've been asked that a lot lately and my answer is pretty much learning how to repeat the delivery. I think the mechanics are crucial to throwing a, a strike pitch every time. And I think one of the main guys in Major League Baseball that was really, really good at repeating his delivery was Yankee great Mariano Rivera. Yep. And ever since I heard that word, years ago about repeating the delivery I researched a little bit about it and started videotaping all my bullpen sessions in the winter and I got really good at it to where I could pinpoint anything that was a flaw in my delivery so I tried to just perfect that delivery to where I could basically pitch and throw a strike with my eyes closed and I kind of like now have dissected the strike zone into nine little parts. I have three parts at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. And I try to throw my pitch at any one of those zones. So it's basically repeating the delivery, understanding the strike zone. And again, I've thrown over 70,000 pitches in my career. So I kind of got this down now. So when my brother Jack actually gets involved and charts all my games, we kind of look for one important ingredient, and that is no bases on balls. Right. So I used to be really into the strikeouts and 
getting double-digit, double-figure strikeouts, but now it's can I throw a game and a complete game with no walks, and I just did that on Saturday night, so I was real pleased. But a few other things, you know, besides the, the solid mechanics, the mental, there's, like you said, there's a mental toughness that goes with it, and, you know, you have to have patience and rest and heal up, and, you know, you have to also throw your secondary pitches for strikes, and I think that's what a lot of young guys struggle with. They come up from, you know, 95 to 100 miles an hour in the big leagues, in the minor leagues, and then they get promoted. They still don't really know how to throw those secondary pitches for strikes, so there's inconsistency and in walks that leads to, to scoring runs, etc. You know, when I was in Lancaster in 2006, um, Bartolo Colon was doing a rehab in uh, Rancho Cucamonga. And we played against him that day. And our kid pitching, you know, was through mid 90s, 94, 95. But Bartolo, man, he was a true professional. He, like you said, he dissected. He was a surgeon on the mound. He no hit us for five innings, and he could hit everything he threw. You know, he hit his location and um, no hit at us for five innings. And he struck out a couple of guys. It wasn't about the high strikeout total, but he could throw his curveball. He could throw his changeup, whatever he threw, you know, the different arm slots. And it, it was amazing to watch. Like I said, he was a surgeon on the mound that day. He's a wonderful pitcher despite his, his size. He's a big, big man. But uh, did you see the play he made at first base with the Mets this past weekend? He is so flipping athletic. I mean, it just blows me I, away. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw him flip that ball behind his back. I was just, like, blown away. Very agile and athletic for a man his size. Oh, absolutely. And he continues, you know, at, you know, 40 and above. What, he's, what, 41, 42, I think now? Maybe hey, a little bit. Yeah, and, I mean, NL Player of the, the Week. I think is what he was, and I mean awesome. he's still he's still dealing. You know he doesn't deal with the velocity that he once has, but he doesn't need to. You know he's he's like I said he's he dissects the strike zone and and uh, he's in control when he steps on that mound. Yeah, he's definitely learned how to pitch in his later days in the major leagues. He's, he's an amazing pitcher. I love watching him. I so, love hearing about him. Yeah. Oh yeah. So growing up, who were who were your influences? I know, I know, Koufax was one of them, and um, we've chatted a little bit about Koufax in the past. But who else did you look to growing up as a pitcher? Well, I like Koufax, being that he's a left-hander. He had that overhand sweeping six-twelve curveball, two no hitters, one over twenty games, Cy Young. He did so much for the Dodgers. I love him because he's from the left side, and I honor his number 32. But my guy was Nolan Ryan. I mean, I love Nolan Ryan. Got to know about Nolan from baseball cards when I was a kid with the Mets. Won his only World Series in 69. Got traded to the Angels. You know, he struck out 383 on the last hitter of the last game of the season. He threw seven no-hitters. He threw... 12 one hitters and 19 two hitters. Guy was just amazing, phenomenal pitcher. You'll probably never see another guy like that in, in our lifetime. You'll never see anybody strike out 383 again. I don't think so. You know, it's, it's tough to even get uh, 250 nowadays. The game, especially when it comes to pitching, has changed so much. Um, you know, you, your guys, you know, they're not expected to go complete games anymore. Back. You know, in the '60s and '70s, it was unheard. Of, it wasn't unheard of for guys to have 20 complete games in a season. But you know, I, I think they were talking about. I can't remember who it was, but I, you know, maybe it was Grinky about it. he's only had a couple of complete games in his career. But it just doesn't happen anymore. Well, with the specialty guys out of the bullpen, you know, you have lefty righty setup guys. If you look at the Yankees; they've got two of the dominant, most dominant pitchers in the American League with uh, the Tantas and and then they have the tall 6-7 guy out of North Carolina. Miller. I mean, they just 
they just come in and blow doors, you know, and there's just kind of hard to get them at the end of the inning, at the end of the game. So what do you see, what are you seeing in the game today? So what are you seeing, um, I don't necessarily want to say what's necessarily is wrong with pitching, um, but what do you see different in, in some of the pitchers today? Well, what I'm seeing, and it's been happening the last few years, but I think a lot of Maple Leaf clubs are desperate for pitching, and kind of goes the same with the minor leagues. They're desperate for pitching, and it becomes thin, and you you try to bring up young kids that aren't really established yet, and you bring them up from, I've seen Class A, Double A, and they're bringing these guys straight up to the major leagues. Let's give the Dodgers as an example. They're going to bring up that, uh, I believe his name is Urias from Mexico. He's, yep. I think he's 19 or 20 right now, and they got him at 16. Logan White was the GM, and he went down to watch his son play in a, in a tournament down there, and he ran into this kid, and they signed him for pretty cheap, like 400000 and They've, they've had real patience bringing him up, but I think there's a chance they might bring him up this year, if not for sure next year. But he's pretty good and polished in season, but a lot of the other guys that I've seen come up pretty quick, and they just don't have knowledge of the strike zone. And I was talking to my brother you know, a few weeks ago when we watched games together, and it's like, look at these pitches. They're missing the strike zone by like a foot and more. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason for that. And I think one is not knowing the strike zone, not having enough confidence. And a lot of a lot of times they don't use their secondary pitches. They can't throw those secondary pitches for strikes. That is like a curveball or a slider or changeup. And they come up and they just walk a lot of guys. And when they walk a lot of guys, those guys on base usually score. And that changes the changes the game you know it reminds me of the movie talent of the game do you remember that with edward james almost where they bring up where they bring up a california angels bringing a kid from genesee idaho which i played football in genesee another story down the road and they rush him they you know they think he's ready and he just he falls apart you know because it's it's um you know pitching in the show it's a whole different deal you know when you go from you know, high A San Jose, you know, with the Giants to pitching in AT and T in front of thirty, forty thousand, it's a whole different game. Plus, you've got hitters that can hit the ball and and you know hit the curve balls. They're they're notifying, you know, they're locating the pitches and, and whatever. So it's a whole different story and we're seeing a lot of that. You know, we're also seeing Agreed. a lot of a lot of arm injuries and you know it, it's a really alarming to me you know big news is matt harvey of the mets on you know shutting him down after 185 innings and you That's know it, it's it's crazy you know because back in the nolan ryan days it wasn't unheard of of pitchers you know getting into 300 innings pitched you know and so right. you know you, we talked to um there's been a couple of former pitchers that we've talked to, uh, you know, and they've talked about, you know, hey, man, back in my day, I'd pitch 325 innings and it was nothing. I'd have 21 complete games and seven shutouts. Sure. You know, going nine Absolutely. innings was nothing, and that's what you're doing. So how do you – what, what do you do to keep your arm healthy? Well, I'm looking at my cabinet here in my – kitchen and I've got so much stuff, you know, and I, I do a lot of research. I talk to a lot of fellow players around the country and ask them, you know, what's what's good and what's legal nowadays, you know? And, you know, I like a leave and, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm finding out that, you know, when you get a good, a good quality, um, Protein, whey protein, those are really good. Those will take care of some of that pain and get that stuff out. Amino acids are really good. I'm finding coconut oil has really helped me. And arnica, arnica is really good for sore arms. I mean, I just have a cabinet full of stuff. And 
you know, I try to, I've had really good results with fruit because there's three or four fruits out there that can heal up that soreness. You know, they're anti-inflammatory, and I think those hold well for my arm. And Again, there's nothing like running. You know, the next morning after I pitched on Saturday, I, I ran 10 miles in 98-degree weather in, in San Antonio, so I think it's just getting a routine in place and taking care of it every day it just becomes... Uh, it becomes like a job. It becomes a lifestyle. How long do you plan on keep uh, keep throwing? Do you have a Do you I'm have a goal in mind? I, yeah, I want to get 500 wins. You know, I'm sitting at I want to say 408. So I need 92 wins, which I think is pretty realistic if I stay healthy. I think what I need to do is maybe not throw these nine inning games. And, <laughs> try to go cut it down maybe to five or six and still you know have fun doing it but i, I just get so competitive and i want to finish where i start right but you know i'm still strong enough i feel pretty good today considering i threw nine on saturday but and you slept on the floor you know, and, and, yeah and i <laughs> <laughs> got a little sore from that but you gotta you gotta take care of your room right yes but you know i think everything's going well i I look at my balls and I've limited my pitches. I think, you know, in the past I could throw 222 pitches in a game, 190, you know, 150, 130. And I think my 112 might be, you know, one of my high games, but I still completed nine. And I attribute that to the control with no walks, you know. So right. if I can throw deep into the game with no walks, you know, I'm saving a lot of pitches in my arm. But. I'm still having fun doing this and competing, and I just love to be out there. And you know, I wish I could do it forever, but that that day is gonna come where it just doesn't work anymore, you know. And, and I I fear that day, but I just love to pitch, and I love baseball, and I love the camaraderie and everything that goes with the game. What do you so four hundred eight wins? What do you so people? You have to have people coming up into to you and telling you. Yeah, you got 408 wins, but what kind of competition are you pitching against? What do you tell people like that? I pitch against the best competition. You play you know, against some pretty. Leaguer. You play against some pretty good competition. I've seen some of those rosters about some of those teams that you play against. They're good baseball players. You know, you know what? I'm, right now, I can say like in my 35 with the Atlanta Bulls, that's, that's the best competition in the country as far as far as. You know, tournaments go. I mean, they might be 35, but these guys are first round draft picks that are on my team. And, you know, we go after the best guys in the country. And there's a lot of, a lot of guys, ex pros and college players. There's just thousands, tens of thousands of them that are still good. And, you know, we, we try to pick camaraderie and talent and put it all together. And that's how we win championships. But, you know, I'm still throwing shutouts against the best teams. It's not like I'm pitching against the worst team every tournament I to go to. I believe me, with the reputation of winning 400 games, you get the best. You get the, to pitch against the best teams because they want to utilize the talent and the gift. Yep. Yep. And you're so, in. in so, wait, you're what? You 50? Know, you're 50 now. 51. 51. You know, I maybe. You know, like I was telling my brother, maybe as I get older, I'll get some of these easy games and just cruise through it. But no, that's not it at all. I'm getting some tough foes to, to pitch against. And, you know, I just have to continue to keep working harder. But again, it's a gift. I've just been given a gift. And, and I understand it now. And I do what I can to keep my body straight and my arm in tune. And my mind straight and it's just a passion and a love that I can't even explain. It's it's pretty deep and I just I'm very fortunate and blessed to do what I do. You know what we are is is and I I was told this a while ago, you know, and I host a show, you know, and I don't get big numbers of people watching it nor do I care. You know, I'm doing this because I love the game of baseball and you know, I've got a gift and I've got a gift to gab and um, I know how to find people. And, um, you know, we're baseball ambassadors is the way I look at it. 
you know, Absolutely. you have a gift and, you know, like you said, your passion lives in the core. You know, you're doing it for your reasons. I'm doing it for my reasons. But the main thing is, is we love the game of baseball. And man, it is such a great game. And, you know, I want to give back. And, and that's why I do my show. And, you know, one of these days, maybe, maybe it takes off. And, um, but, you know, that's not why I'm in it. You know, I do this because I love the game. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, like you, you know, I can't pitch. Um, I don't have that gift. But, uh, but you know, you're an inspiration. And, you know, I, I keep track of you and what happens on, on Facebook, you know, and I follow you. And, um, you know, you're a guy who's, you know, makes it easy to pull for. And, uh, you know, I thank you for that. And... You know, so you talk about the passion lives in the corn. We've chatted about this a little bit. Where does that passion come from? Well, like I said, it's a gift from above. And, you know, I thank my Lord every morning as I go to work and I, I say some prayers. And I just can't ever not do that because that's just who I am and what I'm about. But I think my parents, you know, my father, again, I told you my father was in the military and my mother was a big dreamer and very passionate, and I think I kind of got a little bit of both. I got, you know, my dad's toughness, his mental toughness, his hard work ethic, and I got my mom's passion and, and work ethic, and, and you put it all together, and it's a powerful thing. And it's it's the same thing in work and everything that I do in life. I try to I just try to be the best that I can and give 100% effort on everything that I do and try to have fun and be passionate doing it and you know I never expected any of this I never asked for anything I just I just was given a gift and I try to do as much as I can with it and God willing I just keep winning and I don't understand it but it, it's sometimes it even surprises me you know I was putting a post up last night and I've won 33 out of 34 starts and they've all been pretty much complete games and I don't know how I do it. I'm not a big guy. I'm not, you know, I don't throw 90 plus miles an hour, but I know how to pitch. I figured out how to pitch in my late 30s, and and you kind of get to that mastery level of things where you understand everything about it, and if something goes awry along the way, you know how to fix it. And that's kind of where I'm at now. And I don't know where it's going to take me, but if it takes me where I've been, and I consistently get to keep going to Puerto Rico and Florida and play with the best teams in the country and win championships. I'm a happy guy. I, I couldn't ask for anything else. And when you say, you know, inspiration, if I inspire one person, that, that makes me very happy. That's all I could ask for. And you are. You know, one of these days, you know, that is that was one of my goals when I got involved with baseball back in – you know, the early 2000s, um, you know, was to go to the Latin, Latin American countries, you know, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Venezuela. And I want to experience their brand of baseball because it's different than our brand of baseball. Baseball is baseball. But man, there is so much passion in, in Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic and Mexico. Um, you know, you're seeing that now in, in Uganda. I got a chance to work with um, the 11, 12-year-old girls from Uganda when they were up here for the Little League World Series in, in Portland, Oregon, worked with them for an hour and Little League uh, kicked us out, which was which was pretty cool, oh, wow. you know. And so, you know, being a rebel like that. But, you know, but seeing the passion, man, it, it's awesome, you know. And that, you don't see a lot of that in um, American baseball um, as much. Um and it's it's taken me to you know blow off the dust off of my coaching shoes. I'm coming back next year, and I'm going to coach my seven year old nephew because I see a need for that passion, and I want to I want to help them along with their game. And you know I'm not the best coach out there, and nor do I care. But I want to help them with the passion part of it. You know I want them to love the game as much as I do. And you know we're, we'll be coaching a seven-year-old baseball team next year. I'm really excited. And so, um, you know, 
I'm like you. I have a I have the passion lives in the core. You know, I have a passion for this game of baseball, and I love to share it. And that's what I'm going to do next year, Norm. I've got asked last month to help with our Little League All Star team in Santa Fe, and I enjoyed a couple hours doing it. And I told the coach, you know, next year I'd like to maybe do a camp for all the coaches, not just in your league, but the other two, and combine them all for a day and teach all these coaches how to pitch and what to look for. They can film me, record me, whatever they want to do. But that's something I need to start doing is giving back a little bit more and maybe just kind of helping people learn more about the gift that I have, you know, and, and kind of explain how it's done and everything and let them ask questions and just get more involved with my community. I think that's my next plan. And it is a gift. And, uh, you know, thank you for, for sharing that gift. So we've got a new logo. I don't know if you noticed that, but I posted up a new logo that um, there it is, a new Clubhouse Chatter logo. So uh, starting next month, we're going to be pumping out some shirts. And I definitely want to get a couple out to you. So we'll be chatting um, about getting you some shirts. And uh, so now you've got a book out. Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, my book, Ageless Arm, My Passion Lives in the Core, has been out since 2012. It was published and uh, published by Speaking Volumes out of Naples, Florida. And it's been doing real well. You know, I've, I've got a 10-year 10, 10 contract, and I've been getting some royalty checks. It's pretty cool. And I've started a new one that's due at the end of the year. And I'm pretty excited about it. It's a lot of hard work, but again, if I could just get one kid, one grown up to, you know, to kind of understand what it takes or understand a little bit more about passion and kind of spread the gift and the knowledge, and that's all I want. That's all I could ask for. Nice. I'll have to chat with you a little bit off um, online about about that. I've got a buddy who is looking at publishing a book and so it needs a little help and so it's going to be a it's going to be a good one i have a feeling so once again mr rodney tafoya is there anything else you would like to add before we close no i just want to really thank you norm and i'm trying to been spreading the word about clubhouse chatter and i know that our last interview got close to 100 likes and we'll do the same with this one but i think I think it bodes well for you and everybody you interview, and it's it's a wonderful education for people out there to listen in and learn about from from coaches and major league players, minor league players, amateur players, and it's just kind of spreading the passion of what baseball is and what our wonderful national American pastime has to offer everybody. And, you know, everybody can tie into baseball. Everybody uh, in the world. Is. Absolutely, I I believe so. You know, and you know, for me, you know, the game, the game is about life because you learn life lessons. You know, and and a lot of baseball, you know, especially in the hitting parts of it, you know, it's a lot of failure. I mean, come on, you know, your best hitters, you know, you hit three thirty three, you know, you're a Hall of Famer for the most part, and you know, to hit three balls base hits out of every 10, 11 at-bats, you know, those aren't good Absolutely. odds. Those aren't good odds in, in in life, but, you know, there's so much to learn, you know, with baseball, you know, teamwork, and, you know, you learn about yourself, and, uh, man, it's just a great game, you know. Um, we have a gift in, within baseball that we are able to share worldwide, and that is my goal, you know, baseball for the fan, by the fan. You know, first foremost, I'm I'm a baseball fan, and you know I've got a gift, and I'm able to share it, and you know I want to take it worldwide, and uh, and so once again, thank you for coming on the show, and we'll be chatting we'll be chatting here offline. You know, we we hit up each other a couple times during the week, and uh, you know you've got a spot on the show whenever you want it. I wanted to end with a quote from a recent article I had in my Hall of Fame induction, if I may. Absolutely. So this goes out to any of those aspiring kids or anybody out there that aspires to be anything. And I put 
any milestone, no matter its size, is achievable. All you have to do is believe in yourself, have faith, passion, and work ethic. Your love for what you do will take you where you need to go. The happiness it brings you will fulfill your life and make all your dreams come true. And that's what it's done for me. With that said, I would like to dedicate this show to a pitching giant um, who passed away today, and that was Joaquin and you are. And uh, I, I know, I'm pretty sure that you know who that is. Um, great Cardinals pitcher, pitched with a couple other um, teams as well. And uh, never met the guy, but I remember watching him pitch on TV and from all accounts was a great man. And um, he will be missed, I'm sure, in the baseball in the baseball ranks. And so with that said, the ageless arm, Mr. Rodney Tafoya, once again, anytime you want to come on the show, you're more than welcome to. I really appreciate it, Norm. Thank you for having me again. All right. Thank you very much. So once again, man, you know, we need to get him up here to uh, to speak. I, he's he's a he's a heck of a speaker. So we are sponsored by Baseballism.com, right on cue, Brian. Check out Baseballism, the flag man, and uh, Rodney and I were talking about Baseballism.com the other day. He likes the, the logo and stuff, so. Hopefully the guys will be hooking him up with some stuff. Also, uh, baseball dudes, Mitch or uh, Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington, baseballdudes.com. He used to be a pitching coach in the organiz- Angels organization. To be the best, you must train like the best. Mitch Canham up there in Washington as well, based by pros, sports education. Check him out. And his dad, Mark Canham with MDM Design. They're going to create some shirts for us, and so hopefully in uh, October we'll be having some shirts go out. So as always, yamhilltoday.com. We will be stra- are we streaming live uh, football this weekend, Brian? Um, yes, 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 yes. Yamhilltoday.com. Yes. Check us out. I love uh, giving Brian these little curveballs every once in a while. Um, there's our new logo, Clubhouse Chatter. Uh, Shoot me uh, an email, uh, normbo18.com, if you'd like to sponsor us. Clubhouse Chatter 1T on Twitter. We're also on Facebook, Clubhouse Chatter with Norm. We're on YouTube and iTunes. And uh, thank you. You know, once again, you know, thank you for this opportunity to, you know, talk baseball, man. I love talking baseball. Brian. You know, I'm not so sure that he loves baseball as much as I do, but Brian is a a sports guy and knows his stuff. And thank you for Brian, you know, for offering up his studio and um, doing what we love to do. So next uh, Friday night, yamhilltoday.com. We'll be doing some football, McMinnville High School and South Salem. Check us out. I'm Norm. That's Brian. And the jingling you hear is the clubhouse chatter dog, Maya. So we'll see you next week. All righty. This has been Clubhouse Chatter. I'm Brian. That was Norm. And as he said, that was Maya. Have a good week, everybody.